Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at another one of these bunch of number charts. Uh, basically, I've tested the clock and performance and power scaling on Vega. Now, one thing to note is that there was no undervoltage. Because um, voltage control on Vega right now doesn't seem to work at all. Um, for me, at least, there's just no way to control core voltage. So basically, um, 900 megahertz ran on like 1170 millivolts, um, 1650 ran on 1150 millivolts. So basically the only difference, the, the voltage difference between these two frequencies is just the voltage drop across the power plane or maybe the LLC settings of the voltage controller. I'm not really sure which, but essentially the VRM was aiming to provide about 1.2 volts, what the core was actually getting. So I was measuring off the back of the capacitor bank right behind the core, uh, was 1150 for really, you know, for 1650 megahertz and 1170 for 900 megahertz. So basically the core voltage across the entire frequency range is constant, uh, more or less. So we do see more or less linear power draw scaling, uh, and yeah, let's, let's just take a look at it. So all of these scores are from uh, TimeSpy. Uh, single run only, so they're like the accuracy won't be super high. Uh, the power readings are just the two eight pins. I'm not measuring the PCIe power draw. Don't have the equipment for that as of right now. In the future, I'm hoping to rig up a, a system for reading everything very, very accurately and very, very fast, which that, that'll be super cool. But for now, this was just a current clamp, and basically, I'm just taking peak readings. Um, I wish I could take, like, the total power consumed by the GPU uh, for a given run of Time Spy, but unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to do that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to settle for the peak power draw, though it does, it works for the point I'm trying to demonstrate here, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, so, yeah. Anyway, um, so, you know, uh, th that's the power draw. Here you have the performance. And then some of the analysis I've done is like basically score per uh, percent gain. So this is like, well, basically it takes this score. Now it takes this score, divides it by that score, subtracts 100 and makes it a percentage. So we can see that there's a 9.5% 9 .5, 9 .5 increase going from 900 megahertz to 1000 megahertz core clock. Um, also, these settings right here, these are non-stock, and the reason for that is is these are the only settings I could get where the card actually stayed at a specific clock. I tried to do it with no power limit raise and no HPM overclock, and the issue was that the card was like boosting to 1400 when I was setting 1200 core in Afterburner. I don't really know what the hell is up with that, but that's what it was doing. So these are the settings I ran because these actually read out flat, like these read out flat frequencies and the performance uh, correlates with the frequency pretty well. Like it wasn't like you could tell when the card was clocking up by 200 megahertz and it wasn't doing that. The FPS was exactly where I sort of expected it to be for any given frequency. So uh, yeah. And you can clearly see that the power draw climbs pretty linearly. So, you know, it starts out at like 230 watt. Then it goes to 250, 280, 300, 324, 345, 365, then 375, and then 375 again. Um, you can also see that the percent Im percentage improvement um, versus also the percent improve like increase in core clock. So basically this is to figure out if the card is scaling linearly or not. And we can very clearly see that for, this is like 1% increase in core clock gives you 0.86% increase in performance. And that starts to drop off as you raise the core clock, which is normal. Um, as you hit I, power limit or memory bottlenecks, that kind of thing, your performance slowly starts to drop off as you increase core clock um, and eventually it gets to the point where basically if you try to overclock a vega past stock settings it's just not worth it because for every one percent increase in core clock you only get 0.6 percent increase in performance and part of why i think this is happening is because even with the plus 50 percent power limit the card is maxing out at 375 watts on the two eight pin power connectors um, as in 
this right here should be pulling a good amount more power than the settings for like these settings should pull more power than those settings except that's not actually happening um in peak load scenarios so at that point i'm gonna say the card was underclocking not that you could actually see it in anything like gpu z um gpu z showed a flat frequency uh, you know flat ni nice flat line for the frequency afterburner showed a nice flat line for the frequency but the thing is um all of these new gpu architectures that we're getting today and actually even cpu architectures have power management systems that update at several thousand times a second um the fury x when it came out the smc on that thing updated a thousand times a second uh I, i'm imagining vega has an upgraded version of that um possibly faster it's certainly pretty good at doing its job because if you look at the scores here right um 1300 1400 megahertz i'm getting about 6.5k if you look at the stock settings performance which there was a stock run which gave me 6.7k but i think that was a fluke because i couldn't replicate that one again um but stock with 3200 rpm on the fan uh you get about 6.5k uh six yeah 6.55k uh time spy score for graphics not overall just graphics score and the power draw is actually about the same as like for one gigahertz static clock with max power limit. So it does a really, it does a pretty damn good job of, you know, getting you a decent level of performance without burning your house down. Now, the thing is, is, so that works, but the thing is it makes detecting power throttling, like it makes it really hard to see the card underclocking when it's power starved because... Uh, if you actually check the graphs for the stock settings, you'd be seeing frequencies around 1400. But we know they're not constantly pegged at 1400 megahertz core clock, because otherwise this power draw figure here would be way higher. So obviously, you know, so basically when, you know, I see this 375 watts power draw, this 375 watts power draw, this miserable scaling, and then, like, it's just... Yeah, it's pretty obvious that at this point the card is power throttling on, uh, you know, it's basically doing the micro throttling thing, which is what I'm going to call this, because it throttles for shorter periods of time than what any software can pick up, except for the fact that your score isn't behaving properly. Now, I still haven't tested uh, score scaling against HBM, because right now I'm having some trouble with getting the HBM to overclock properly, um, mostly because the air cooler sucks. And the HBM requires, like, HBM, as usual, is temperature sensitive. Very temperature sensitive. So if you're buying a Vega card and you want to run, say, 1100 or 10, like, in excess of 1050 uh, HBM, you're going to need a bigger cooler. Um, unless the custom cards come with a big, big enough cooler, which, considering the power draw levels this thing is hitting, that's going to be... Kind of hard to do, um, honestly, because we're looking at 375 watts on the freaking 8 pins um, with, with just, like, basically stock settings. That's that's the ma major issue. Um, the card is extremely power-hungry, and the performance really isn't great. I mean, this right here is between, like, a very high clock, like, a really good 1070. This is above, like, a good 1070 and below a, 10, an, a good 1080. So... The performance really isn't great right now, um, though I imagine there's going to be some major driver updates which really, really improve the performance. The power consumption is not going to change, though. I, I don't, I can't see that changing. So, if you want to run Vega maxed out, I mean, I guess you're going to have to go find a bigger power supply because this thing pulls a ton of power. Um... Yeah, uh, the other issue is, like, the clock scaling just falls off completely. The card power throttles, even with maxed out 50%. Uh, I talked to Steve from Gamers Nexus about this. He said he saw pretty much the same thing. The card power throttles. You max out the power limit, it still power throttles. It, it needs... I, I imagine that in order to get the Vega card to run constant clock, like, absolutely constant clock, so that the scaling is linear for longer and there's no no throttling of any kind you'd need like th maybe 600 watts maybe 700 watts tdp uh set in the bios 
which, you know, that's, that's like an entire power supply <laughs> worth of power right there. That's like bigger, that's more power going into the GPU than what most people use as a power supply. So that's a problem. That's a very major, it's a, that's a pretty big problem, but yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it because that's what the numbers are pointing to. I can't imagine the power draw going down anytime soon. Uh, historically, drivers have never lowered power draw unless they actively harmed performance in the process as well. So, yeah, it's... It's... Uh, that's really annoying. And as of right now, basically what we're seeing with Vega FE is that the performance, we're, we're power starved, where cooling starved, the stock cooler sucks. Um, especially when, like, because it's, it's just, yeah. The cooler sucks. The card is power starved. It needs a higher TDP. The PCB could take it. Uh, definitely, the PCB could take a much higher TDP. Um, I'm kind of terrified of what Vega would do on higher core voltage. Because Vega at stock has a maximum core voltage of about one point. Like, the software go the saw the power states on the card go up to 1.2 volts and the thing is if you were overclocking it so you don't really have a lot of headroom with voltage for for 40 nanometer Glo global foundries gpu gpu is like right now the voltage we like i recommend is pretty much 1.25 volts though i've not actually seen an endurance test of 40 nanometer glow flow on 1.4 volts or anything like that so I don't know if it's going to degrade for sure. It's just I wouldn't go that high. There's a pretty good chance Vega has a more mature 40 nanometer manufacturing process, which is more voltage tolerant. However, if it's pulling 375 watts through the two 8 pins and power throttling at 1650 megahertz, 1 1.2 volts, I kind of don't want to know how much power it's going to burn on 1.3. You know, that that's just... Uh, like, this is already really, really, really power hungry. More voltage is just going to make it way worse. Um, which, admittedly, if, you know, we get access to more voltage, that's the first thing I'm going to do, is for benchmarking, I'm definitely going to crank up the voltage. But for a gaming card, this is just completely... Like, is ridiculous, really. It's absolutely ridiculous how much power this thing burns for, for gaming. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really, really power-hungry card. And it there, there's not really much else to add to it right now. Um, I really want to do HBM uh, clock uh, scaling as well. So that I can figure out if, you know, the miserable performance we scaling we start getting around 1300. If that's not maybe a uh, memory bottleneck or or if that's already the power limit is starting to kick in. Because um, I, I have these peak, you know, current draw figures here. But ultimately, these aren't as fast. Um, like, they're from the current clamp I use, which that thing is not as fast as the power monitoring circuitry and control circuitry on the GPU. So I could be seeing a 26.8 peak average power draw for like half a second maybe. Um, and the GPU could actually be spiking well into like really, really high and basically using that to decide to drop the core clock on the fly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to say. Um, but I, I kind of hoping that from 1300, it's actually sort of starting to memory bottleneck because I did do some memory testing when I had the card on the AIO and memory overclocking actually makes this thing pick up quite a bit of performance. So yeah. Um, and, and the good news is HPM overclocking does work. It's just really temperature sensitive. So if you buy one of these, um, I'd honestly recommend trying to get the, if you end up with one, if, if you end up with a Vega card, my personal goal would be to get the card below 60 degrees. Now, if there will be actually cards with heat sinks big enough to do that is a whole separate matter. I'm, I'm really not sure. I mean, Fury cards, we saw some ridiculous heat sink designs that if you set them to high enough fan speed, you could get the cards as low as 50 degrees constant. So those cards didn't have a problem, but Vega, it's like the Fury X, quite frankly, looks tame compared to the power draw figures 
that Vega manages to do. Especially considering the Fury X wouldn't power throttle um, until you really cranked up the voltage on those cards. So, yeah. Um, also, one other thing is just like, AMD, could you please give us access to BIOS modding again? Like, that, that would be really awesome if we could BIOS mod these cards again, because it's like, I just want to see what happens when you take the chains off. Because, like, here it's yanking on that chain pretty hard, <laughs> and, it, and it shows. So I, I'd really love to, like, as an overclocker, I'd love to see where Vega tops out. Because um, obviously I ha it has more potential than this at the cost of even higher power draw figures. But for like gaming purposes, I mean, AMD needs to make that, like whatever driver update or whatever magic they plan to work on RX Vega needs to be some pretty freaking strong magic. Because there's no way this looks attractive at that power draw level. It, it just like this is such a low score for how much power this burns that even I'm like, even I'm highlighting it. And I generally don't care about power draw, but this is like a legit problem here. Because this thing power throttles at 450 watts total card power limit, which is just insane. Um, and, and I know like this doesn't, this is only 8 pin power, so I, I don't have a way to measure the PCIe. So... Yeah, I, I I don't know. It's like if, if they if somehow AMD can make the card pick up like a lot of performance. Let's see, let's say twenty percent. Yeah, that that would be like that that would be like moderately acceptable. I'd say I had the card all the way up to seven six five six with HBM overclocking in the past. So if you added twenty percent onto that, then you know that yeah. If it was scoring like that, I'd be okay with the power draw for the most part. But right now, it's just too much for too little. And, and yeah, it's just... I, I honestly don't know what to say. I think the numbers pretty much speak for themselves, you know, now, now, now that I've explained them. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, this is... This makes a GTX 480 look good. <laughs> honestly, it does. You know, it's just... Yeah, and also my musings in the PCB breakdown for Ve uh, Vega Frontier Edition, which I did for Gamers Nexus, uh, about if AMD was just being super generous with the VRM or if the card actually needed it. Well, I think that's answered now. The card really needs that 12 phase. Like, really needs that 12 phase. <laughs> um, because, yeah, it, it pulls an insane amount of power. Um so, yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below about this because I'd love to hear your thoughts if there's also any kind of tests other than, of course, the HBM scaling tests that I also want to do. Um, if there's any other tests you would like to see um, that don't include games because I don't have any, then, uh, you know, go ahead and drop that down in the comments below. And if you would like to support what I do here at Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon, a PayPal, and there's shirts available that you can buy. So you can find all of that in a single link down in the description. Oh, and there's also the AHOC Junkyard where you can basically buy uh, hardware that I've used on Actually Hardcore Overclocking um, that I no longer want to use and because of the state it's in, which is it's functional. It's just not look... It doesn't look great. So... Basically, it's kind of hard to get rid of that hardware. So, you know, that, that's what, why the junkyard exists. So you can support me through that as well. Uh, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.